Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dun -dun. I'm excited because today we're knocking out three of them. We've got Sonic, Witch Witch, and Krispy Kreme. So we've got like the Sonic spicy steak, bacon, grilled cheeses, their chili cheese Frito burritos. We've got a corn dog, a hot dog, some of their fried popcorn chicken. We also have a tuna Witch Witch, meatball Witch Witch, a Philly cheese steak Witch Witch, and I don't know what this one is. Which Witch 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 <laughs> is it? <laughs> and then we have some mozzarella sticks and Krispy Kreme donuts. This is like the biscoff edition. <sighs> Those are the airplane cookies. You know what I'm talking about? They only taste good oh, on the airplane. Oh, that's a cookie on top? Yes, the Biscoff Ooh. flavor. So with that being said, speaking of airplanes, it has nothing to do with airplanes. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. Okay, you know those TikToks that are like, hey, what do you do for a living on the streets oh of New York? And it's always like the most bizarre job that you didn't even know existed. And you're thinking, is that a real job? And then they're like, how much do you make? And they're like, a bajillion dollars. And you're like, wait, what? Did you guys know there's such a thing as data brokers out there? Data, data yeah. broker. So these brokers essentially collect your online data and they trace it back to you because you your device has a unique IP address and they'll turn around and sell that data that's connected to you to come companies, and even government agencies. I want to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not the reaction. Okay, okay. You want to do it, but you don't want it done to you, you know? Oh, for sure. Which is insane, because that is why I refuse to do anything on the internet, on my phone, on my iPad, on my computer, without ExpressVPN. Okay, think of it like this. Using the internet without a VPN is like logging into your social medias on a public computer, like mm -hmm. a library computer, and then walking away. Oh, I can't do you that. You don't even log off. No, no. You, you just log on, never log off, walk off. Do you really want everyone to know how many times you've DM'd Jungkook? Do you? <laughs> or maybe how many pictures you have saved on Instagram or TikTok of Yoongi? No, mm. that's sh that we want to keep to ourselves. Okay, that's very private information. Thank you very much. ExpressVPN is a virtual private network that masks your device's IP address. And when you turn it on, it basically gives you a different IP address, almost like a Google voice number or something, making it much more difficult for them to identify who you are. Nobody can snoop through what you're searching, who you're talking to. And this is extra important because whenever you're connecting to an unencrypted Wi-Fi, like uh, airport networks, hotel, coffee shops, honestly, even at home, you're at risk without a VPN. A hacker connected to the same unencrypted Wi-Fi network can steal your personal information with just basic knowledge. They can gain access to your passwords, financial details, even emails. ExpressVPN protects you by encrypting your network data. And now the best part is you can change the location to nearly anywhere in the world. You're like, why is that the best part? You can watch more Netflix. So Netflix in the US has a set catalog. Netflix in Korea, in France, in India, they all have a set catalog. Just by changing your location with the same Netflix login, you gain access to new and more shows and movies. Using Netflix without ExpressVPN is like going to Krispy Kreme and only having glazed donuts on the menu. <laughs> you can't get the limited edition Biscoff donuts. Bis. And ExpressVPN is super fast. I've never had any buffering issues. So make sure to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Go to expressvpn.com slash bis or click the link in the description. That's expressvpn.com slash bis. And thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the food. Oh, okay. So Stephanie wants to call dip on a few things. Okay, so I'm gonna call and then, dip. And then, then you can call dip. <laughs> Okay, and then so I will take. I'm calling dibs on this one. Okay. And then I'm calling dibs on the. Oh, actually, can I call dibs on this one, guys? I'm getting into it. I don't know what it is. Then then you, which one? It looks you call really dibs? good. Oh. Meatball. Oh. Oh, a meatball. meatball. What? You're a meatball type of guy. Mm -hmm. Oh. Bruh. Mm. Really, then, then you go for the meatball sub? Oh yeah. You don't like meatball? Wow. Well, oh, no, I'm not particularly into meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're going at. Yeah. Going for. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're trying to say, honey. Okay, the chicken. I'm gonna dip it into honey mustard. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Classic. But this mm. is classic. So what's this again? That's the fish and chips. This is not fish and chips. It's tuna salad with some, um, literally, chips. Oh, so it is fish and yeah, chips. Yeah, I gotta have a bite. I'm sorry. Which one's better? Mm. Mm. Which one's better? I like this one. It's very good. Mm. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's another sub here. 
You can try that one if you like. Which one is that one? Like Show them. Oh, it's like a BLT. That sounds good. Okay, this is the chili cheese mm. and the Frito burrito. I love anything with Frito Lays in it, like the Taco Bell. Do you know what I'm talking mm. about? Can I have some honey mustard? Mm -hmm. mm. Are cool. you guys into honey mustards? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yeah? You guys are? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? So I'm not special. Actually, I like honey mustard and ranch mixed together. It's actually what? the best. Mm. Here. Let's try it. I'm so sorry. Just double dip? Yeah, I'm gonna double dip. Wow. Who um, came out with this? I don't know. Maybe it's a thing. Mm. I don't even know where I okay. learned it. But honey mustard and ranch together are is Yeah, it's good. What do you think? Pretty good. It's pretty mm. good. Mm. There's just something about it. Wow. Mm. This sandwich is good. Everything's good. I'm in a good mood now that it's good. <laughs> it's always good. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I was kinda hangry before this. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm gonna take the pink one, yeah? Mm-hmm. Nobody this is a Biscoff then, and you want Biscoff or chocolate? I'll take chocolate. <gasps> you don't like Biscoff? This is classic. It's like a little butthole that's <laughs> leaking a little doo-doo, but... <laughs> but what's new? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what it tastes like? Like coffee? Like sugar high. Oh. Wow. Perfect. Has Sophie had donut yet? No. Oh mm. my god. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. She's gonna go crazy. Bro, they're trying to limit her candy intake. I don't know who gave her candy, okay? But now anytime she sees candy in the house, she does both hands like this, and then she goes, Hey, hey, hey. One? one, honey. Hello, man, Julia. Hello, man. Oh my god. That means just one, please. Just no. one. <laughs> just one. Can you pass me one of those sandwich or whatever? What is that? These are bacon spicy steak sandwiches. It looks really good. This is from Sonic. Mm -hmm. How is it? <laughs> okay. The vibe is not good. He's analyzing. Mm. It's missing something. Mm. Maybe some sauce, yeah. Mm. Incredible. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Oh my god. What? That one's good? The guac one? Which witch is good. Which witch is so good. I like which witch more than Subway. Mm. Yeah. Let's get into these confessions. I want to know what kind of nasty thoughts, what kind of nasty deeds you guys have committed, and I will cleanse you of your sins. With what power? We don't know. <laughs> okay, so confession number one. I am in love and I can't do anything about it. A little bit about me, I'm a bisexual male, which is important for the story. But anyways, two years ago, I was working at the same place that I do now, and I'm in charge of carrying around mics and other equipment for whatever video shoots might be happening. So two years ago, while working on a set of a local film, I met a makeup artist. She didn't work for my company. Her entire team was hired through someone else. So not a coworker, I'm assuming. Long story short, after weeks of speaking to her in these small little intervals, just tidbits, I had developed a very strong crush. It got to the point of me memorizing her coffee order and even knowing all of her dog's names. She has eight dogs, by oh the way. God. So obviously, <laughs> I was pretty taken by this girl. Fast forward about eight weeks of working together and I was finally ready to ask her out. I mean, the moment was perfect. It was nighttime, which meant the hot weather was finally simmering down. And also, filming had been delayed due to technical reasons, so everybody had a little bit of free time. Definitely the perfect moment for me to approach and ask the big question. There was a trailer designated for staff who weren't a part of the cast to use, um, though most of us never used it. As I said, it was really hot and none of us were keen on sweating, but I heard from another staff member that the girl that I liked, let's call her Susie, was in the trailer. So the girl that he likes is Susie and she's in the trailer, so he's like, let me go in the trailer. So I get to the trailer and walk right in to deliver my confession of love, not expecting to find Susie having the most intense sex I've ever seen right there on the sofa with a guy that's not a part of the staff. I would later learn that he is, was in fact her boyfriend. Mm. Wow. But also, how are you gonna not put in details? What's the most intense sex you've ever seen? I need to know, are we talking, like what is your parameters for intense sex? 
I just need to visualize. I'm a visual person. But there's a difference. There's a difference between dog style and someone being suspended from the ceiling and spinning around in a <laughs> tutu and getting spanked. <laughs> a little bit of a difference, you know? Like, I think the trauma level would be different. So as I mentioned, the trailer was designated for all the staff, so it hasn't occurred to me that I should knock in case people might be, you know, doing it. There I was, just making eye contact and mumbling out of a string of apologies when her boyfriend, the most sexiest man that I think I have ever seen, just tells me to shut up because he doesn't plan on stopping. Whoa! <laughs> Honestly, that's kind of hot. What? What? That's kind of hot. How is that hot? That's kind of hot. <laughs> Let us continue. Get out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kind of like that. It's kind of hot. You don't think it's kind of hot? So will we ever get walked in? Yo. Uh, it depends by who. Exactly. Just get out. <laughs> no, it depends by who. If it's a complete stranger. I mean, who else is in the house? Oh, God, no. Oh, we God, stop no. immediately. We get on our knees and beg for forgiveness. And then we burn this house down and try to find a new one. <laughs> And hope that she doesn't follow us anymore. Oh my god. I'm talking about my mom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you just jacked my sandwich, bruh. Do you want to try this one? Yeah, the Philly cheese steak. It's good. Okay, fine. These subs are good. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. You want yeah. the other one? Mmm. Okay. A lot of onions. Mm-hmm. So what, is he in love with the guy now? That's what I predict. That's, That's what, what I'm predict. sensing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Well. Wow. Well. You've never had two crushes at once? No. <laughs> <laughs> once you have a crush, you just think about that. Oh, everything else is like. Yeah, everything just else. Is that's true. Then, then that's how that's I feel. That's true, right? Yeah. Oh. You, you feel the same way, right? Been this way, only been this way, will always be this way. <laughs> <laughs> and boy did he mean that because for about 20 seconds I stood there just watching them have sex until I realized how creepy that was and so I just dipped and for the next week the image of them kept playing in my mind heightened by the fact that he would pop up every day just to say hi not only to her but the rest of the crew and was particularly friendly in saying hi to me which at the time I assumed was due to him finding my embarrassment amusing I was wrong I'll skip the boring back and forth details on how Susie, her boyfriend, and I had a weird flirtatious relationship going on for the next couple of weeks. After about three weeks of flirtatious banter, the couple just straight up asked me if I wanted to, um, mm. a menage a trois. <laughs> Why not what? They f <laughs> Oh, three? Uh-huh. Now, it wasn't just sex. There was a lot of it, okay? until the end of filming actually, but it was a lot more to me at least. We cuddled, I'd bring her tiny gifts to work, we'd share secret kisses. If he ever came to set to say hi to his girlfriend, he'd make a point of finding me as well, and he had a habit of bringing her tiny snacks, and now I was a part of that. Oh yeah, I was getting my snacks delivered. There was conversation, endless conversation, in person, on calls, over text. Basically, I had fallen for them, both of them. And after filming had ended, so did whatever we had. I then realized what they were seeking was merely no strings attached fun. And I had been the idiot to catch feelings. It's been two years now, I still think of them. I've tried moving on, but I can't. I dated someone for a little bit. She liked your videos and that's how I found you. And even though we're <laughs> broken up now, I still remain a big fan and enjoy every video you make. Love, hopeless. <laughs> Wait, I love you. I love this so much. <laughs> but also, okay, that's, I don't know how to feel about it. Oh. At least, they, at least he found you. Yeah, I wish I could give you a hug. You know, that's like, you know what that reminds me of? And this is going to sound so stupid. But it's like when you read a really good book and you get into this crazy world and like everything has changed and your emotions are crazy and they're running wild. And then out of nowhere, the book is over. And you're just all of a sudden like, whoa, mm -hmm. what just happened? I was in this world and now I'm not. And now I feel like Damn. so melancholic. That's like watching Netflix show too. Yeah. And that's the best part. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, we were just, we were just <laughs> getting to the good part. Exactly. What the hell is going on? Okay, if you guys were in a menage a trois situation like this, which one would you want to be? Because some people say, I don't want to be the couple because I feel like there's so much psychology of a couple inviting another person in. Some people say, I don't want to be the non-couple because situations like this could happen where mm -hmm. the couple just kind of move on and you're left with this like super empty feeling. Which one would you guys want to be? 
second option. Yeah, I think I'll be the second option. The third party, mm -hmm. the non-couple party. Yeah, I'm just. It's complicated, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have a if you have a couple, it's like there's more things to worry about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They sell those at like ball games, like baseball games. They need to start selling Korean corn dogs. Dude, yeah, Korean I think it'd be a corn hit. dogs would be a mm. hit. Wow, it would be a hit. Yo, yo, yo actually. Business idea. I better see you at the... The Brave Stadium, <laughs> Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I'll buy it from Duluth. He said, I'm not even going to make it. I'm going to flip it and then resell it. <laughs> he said, for he two said, more dollars. buy low, sell high. <laughs> buy low, sell high on game day. I mean, I think they'll buy it. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm driving all the way down there. Yeah. To get it for you. And the ball, like the ball game foods, they're so expensive. It's like movie theater food. It's ridiculously overpriced for no mm. reason. That's actually really smart. Yeah. Okay, confession number two. But I think you would need to get a license and somehow get approved at the ballpark. Mm. But they probably have like people that they work with. No, just like. <laughs> <laughs> or, just, trench coat. or just like drive by in the parking lot. <laughs> hey, 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 you want hey, corn hey, dogs? Hey, hey, before you go in. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You want a corn dog? They're all like, wait, you want a what? My family's here. <laughs> Okay, confession number two. Hey, Steph, really love watching your videos, and it just makes my... <laughs> Why did I just say hey, Steph? Hey, Steph! Okay. Oh my god, that's like six exclamation points. <laughs> really love watching your videos, and it makes my day better when I'm feeling down. Thank you! You can identify me as Kay, and I will share my story with you. Title, The Plot Twist, okay? I like that. So when I was about 17, <laughs> I was in... That's the only title? Okay. So when I was, I know where this, there's no way to know where this is going. So when I was about 17, I was enrolled into a new school and I was gonna make some new friends. As a young teenager at the time, I was really horny, I guess, you know? And I started to learn how to do the nasty, but I didn't really, you know, not really did it before, just learning. Well, I met with some female and guy friends in a group, and one day, I shared hair headphones with this guy. Let's call him A. He put it into my ear for some online video watching in class. However, when he switched on his phone, my eardrum was about to explode because of the loudest moans that I have ever heard in my entire freaking life. Immediately, I jumped out of my seat and literally pulled off the AirPods out of my ears and I was shook. That guy that I shared the AirPods with, I thought he was always the most innocent one. My teacher and my classmates were all staring at me like, what are you doing? Wondering what the hell is going on. Of course, I couldn't say that I was hearing moaning and po- and just crazy upside down sex going on. <laughs> so I turned to the guy and he was winking and lifting his eyebrow at me. Oh my god. Oh Bruh. my god. 911. <laughs> oh my god. A 911? But like when I was a teenager, I would have eaten that up, okay? What? <laughs> I would have eaten what? that up. Oh lord. <laughs> me being a teenager at the time, I thought, you know, to my stupid self, that he wanted to do the nasty with me. <laughs> That's a pretty good conclusion. <laughs> like that's, that's a good hint. Yeah, mean. like that's a yeah. The jump from A to B is not that long. I would I would arrive at the same destination. All right, all right. Let's just say nothing happened at the time. One year later, when I'm 18 years old, I start hearing these rumors saying that guy A has been asking and luring girls into the boys' toilet to lick his lick his you know Corn dodo. Dog. She wrote dodo. 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 Yeah, which is like, is that the ding dong or is that? The doo doo. The doo doo. <laughs> like, <laughs> now I'm confused. Let's hope because it's not doo doo. You can lick both, you know? Oh. And do the nasty! I was in shock, but I was also kind of curious, okay? Again, as a stupid young teenager, I sneaked into the boys' toilet one day and I hid inside one of the cubicles. I heard some people coming in, so I just kept quiet. I listened. Gradually, I hear girls and guys moaning. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on the freaking toilet. And as a stupid ass, I peeked over the toilet cubicle, and I saw my friends, my girlfriends, licking the boys and the guys and doing the nasty. How many people are there? I don't know. And I mean, he looked honestly kind of hot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so I really wanted to escape out of my toilet, and this is really weird to me. When I looked closer, I saw my... <gasps> You did not give me warning. I saw my friend's sister licking her own brother. S thing. <sighs> Yo, hello. <laughs> 911. Yo. 911. Ah, uh, that's not, that's not, oh, no. I was really, really shocked at that moment, and my mouth just took control, and I... <gasps>
really loud. They all turned their heads to look at me and had this look in their eyes that was saying, we cannot let her escape. Oh. <laughs> I was fearing for my life as I did not want to get or forced the nasty on me and I had my phone with me and I switched on the video recording mood mode and they asked me to get out of the cubicle and guy A asked me if I was feeling horny while I was watching them. I mean, it was kind of hot, yeah? But what? I said no. <laughs> <laughs> but I said no, okay? But he starts caressing my face and kissed me on the lips. And that kiss was the hottest, steamiest kiss I've ever had. What? And then, uh... It then proceeded to, um, you know, do some stuff, and we could just not stop, you know, we we're feeling really horny, so yeah, not to forget about my phone, they did not realize that I had my phone recording what they were doing, and after all of this stuff, and then I remembered, oh my god, the video. I grabbed my phone and I dashed out so that they could not see that I was recording a video. When I went back home, I found out that my phone recorded the nasty, and I wanted to immediately delete it, but I'm not sure why I didn't, but that would be the worst decision of my life. If you guessed. I didn't guess, by the way. <laughs> like, there's no part in this story I guessed appropriately. <laughs> no part. Also, we're not going to go back to the incest. Like, we're just going to... That's fine. Okay. My brother... My brother took my phone. And he wanted to send something to his friends. My brother is younger than me. He doesn't oh. have a phone of his own. And I let him use mine whenever he needs to do a project or contact his friends. And I realized that he accidentally sent the video with his things to his friends. I was panicking, screaming, shouting. But I couldn't tell my parents or my brother, obviously. This was the moment where it all went downhill. I went to school that next day and everyone is staring at me and my friends with weird glances. Oh I felt that something bad had happened and it might be due to my brother's mistake, right? I opened up my Instagram as usual and I saw this post saying, my friend's hot sister and her friends. Yeah, well, it was the video. I immediately texted my brother's friend to delete it and needed to bribe them to take down the post. There's more coming up, so stay tuned for part two. How are you just going to cut us off at this and say that there's part two? When? Next Release year. the date. <laughs> next season. Next yeah. season. Next season. Okay. <laughs> Release the date. Love you, Stephanie. I love you too, Kay. But like, give me part two. That really was a plot twist. I did not expect any part of that story. I really. cannot go to that school no more if that happens. No. <laughs> like seriously. Mm -hmm. And this is what? High school? Yeah, sometimes I think I had a wild high school life. But then I read these confessions and I'm like, wow. What's the wildest thing you've done in high school? In high school? Yeah, wildest. Did you like kiss a girl? No. No holding hands? Holding hands? Nah. Not in high school. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sad, exposing but them. <laughs> not in a high school, man. What'd you do, honey? I was eating pizza with mayo on it. <laughs> hey, that's pretty bad. <laughs> so nasty. How about you? Okay. <laughs> you said, okay, let's not go down there. Oh, I drink alcohol. Mm. Oh sh. <laughs> Wait, that's al that's illegal, but. <laughs> <laughs> I drank alcohol senior year. In you didn't drink it before? No. What? Yeah. Like ever since prom. What? The end that. of the high school where you drink. Oh, but that was a start though. That like, was like that's when I first started drinking. Mm. Yeah. And then he could he couldn't stop since. Okay, I wasn't <laughs> addicted, but like actually like high school, mm -hmm. I didn't do anything. Like it was college when I started trying things. Trying things like holding <laughs> hands. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 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 All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Confession number three. I slept with an idol and I didn't know who it was until afterwards. Okay, so before you immediately think that I'm delusional and found this on Wattpad, I'm here to say that this is an actual real life experience that I had and honestly, it kind of scarred me. LOL. So to give you some background information, this took place December of 2019. I was 22 years old and just finished getting my bachelor's degree at a college in my hometown. I'm a Asian female and I've always had a passion for teaching. <laughs> what? This is how I knew shit was gonna get weird. I was at church oh, on a regular schmegular Sunday when I was talking to one of my friends who was about to depart for Seoul to be an English teacher. Although I am Korean, I'm also white. A lot of my Korean culture was washed out through the years since my dad was a traveling nurse and my mom was the one who raised me and my brother. So I'm guessing her dad is Korean. Now, I love my mom to death, but Shelby is as white as can be. 
<laughs> this woman didn't know how to cook rice until I was 13 years old. And because my father was rarely home when my brother and I were growing up, we missed out on a lot of cultural experiences. I only know bits and pieces of Korean and I hardly know what the culture is, but this didn't stop me from immediately being intrigued by the thought of being an English teacher in South Korea. It took a lot of thinking, but I finally realized that this had to be a God giving me an opportunity to embrace who I am. That's honestly true. Oh yeah, because it happened at church too. So I applied for the EPIC program in Korea, and by the grace of God, I got an elementary school job in Seoul. I was so happy and excited, but the process was so hard I almost gave up. I had to apply for a work visa, mail all these highly sensitive documents that got lost in transit three times. It was so stressful and expensive, but eventually, I successfully made it to my new home for a year unless I decided to renew my contract. So I'm in Seoul, okay? It's a dream come true. Love my kids, love my school, my housing, my transit is paid for. It was honestly just amazing. One night, a few of my teacher friends and I decided to go out. We went to a club in Itaewon and we got plastered. Once we started drinking, I don't remember everything that happened that night, but the next thing I knew, there was this man all over me. Just grabbing my waist, telling me how exotic I looked. Oof. Which I assume was like a compliment, question mark. But he was so hot, I just went with the flow, okay? We were dancing, he was buying me drink after drink, and it was great. We were on the dance floor and he kissed me out of nowhere. It wasn't like a simple, innocent peck, it was like full on tongue down my throat, Jeez. gripping my ass for dear life, <laughs> saliva everywhere. Oh, that's my biggest nightmare. So he, he was like, oh, oh my god, guys. Did you know there's a machine? It's a kissing machine. Shut up. What? what? Yes. So it's for long distance <laughs> couples or anyone else. Basically, it's a device you can attach your phone to. So while, while you're FaceTiming someone, this it's like a gel that can form into a mouth. So you can make out with it. That's Imagine true. you're making no. out with your that's so weird. partner through the screen. No. no, see, that's inappropriate because I'll be FaceTiming you. And I'm like, babe, what am I looking at right now? That's not what this is meant to be for. <laughs> show me your face bro, right you now. Know, you, know how show funny, you know how funny you'll look? <laughs> yes. Like, bro. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean, yeah? So, wait, yeah, that's what people said. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what you do. So, you can use it for anything. Okay. <laughs> and then some other people is like, mm -mm, nope. No saliva, no tongue, uh, no so. No, <laughs> no so. No fun. <laughs> and the fact that I tried to buy it. <laughs> Yo. Bro, can we buy it? It's in China, no. though. Oh, oh, it's only China? Yeah. I'll fly there to buy it. Yeah, I'll, I'll look for it after. <laughs> so anyway, saliva everywhere. Okay, a dirty, raunchy kiss, and I loved every second of it. <laughs> the man pulled me to the restroom where we proceeded to do it right then and there, reverse cowgirl <laughs> on the public toilet, and oh. it wasn't even quick. My friends and I said we were gone for an hour, <laughs> minimum. <laughs> After we finished and he asked for my number, so I gave it to him. He kind of disappeared after that and we went our separate ways. I went back home, slept it off until the next morning when I got a text message with a link to a PDF. It was an NDA. I was so beyond confused. At first I thought a video of me drunk had gotten back to my school and they wanted nothing to do with me anymore. I immediately started panicking and crying uncontrollably and I was flicking, flipping the f out and I didn't know what to do. I thought I was being fired. Keep in mind, this was only a short time after I arrived in Korea, and I had not been int introduced to Korean pop culture, like K-dramas, K-pop, right? I had little to no knowledge of what an idol even was, so I went to my friend's apartment, who had been in Korea years longer than me. I show her the NDA, and she immediately laughs. And I mean, hysterically, like laughing hysterically. I was honestly kind of pissed off, like, why do you think it's so funny that I'm being fired from my job? And oh my god, she showed me the logo on the corner of the PDF, and there were three letters. Wait. Yeah. JYP? JYP. No way. Oh Are you yeah. serious? Gosh. At this point, she's pointing at it, and I'm even more confused. And she went on to remind me of the stranger that I snuck off with. She couldn't really recognize his face at the time, but then she pulled up a video of us dry humping on the dance floor and immediately knew who it was. It was a JYP idol from an older but still ridiculously popular group. Holy. I googled the f*** out of him and I was shocked. But beyond that, I never saw him again. To this day, I never discussed what happened with anyone beside the people who witnessed it for legal and moral reasons. Looking back, I regret it very much. I'm very religious and plan to save myself from marriage. If I was sober and if I was in my right mind, I wouldn't have done it. 
He did not assault me. I was conscious enough to consent, but still, I was disappointed in myself. I want to take this. I wanted to take this to the grave with me, but simply because of my unfaithfulness to my religion. But that it would make a great confession in your videos. Oh well, love you, Stephanie Dandan and Steph Fiance. I love you too. This is insane. So she didn't write the name secretly. No. Oh damn. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I want to know. I know. I want to know too. Oh, because she signed the NDA. Uh huh. But, but I still want to know. Wow. Mm, who could it be? That's insane. But you know what? Just on your I'm last kinda, point, though. Yes. I'm kind of shocked that they they would just go to a club and and I right? they do. and make out. But people. wouldn't people watch, like see that? See, yeah, exactly. It's a club, like yeah. yeah. No, mm. but Itaewon Club is crazy. I went there once. <laughs> is actually, it wild? No, it's actually like. What happens? Well, I like it more than American Club because it's more like the music's good too. Mm. Um, everyone's. Very formal. Five minutes ago, then it's like, I haven't held anyone's hand. <laughs> but like, you know, the Italian club be lit. No. Yeah, we be f***ing it up. <laughs> Better no. than American ones. But it's yeah. crazy though. The bathrooms are spacious. <laughs> hey, it is. <laughs> and it's actually clean. Like, it's I actually don't want to know this. <laughs> I don't want to know what you do in Korea on your free times. Ah, uh, but it's Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but on your last point, I used to be religious, I'm not religious anymore, but I do know that even just recognizing and coming to terms with like the idea that you made a mistake, I think is a really admirable thing. She probably won't do it again. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Next confession. I was wild in online. That is the top. Hello, Bis. I was not thinking of sharing this, but then I realized that I only have you and Dan Dan to blame because of it all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, excuse me. <laughs> Call me for you, okay? Okay, just kidding. But kind of, lol. Okay, <laughs> wait, what? It all started two years ago when I watched you and Dan Dan trying out Omegle. I did not know what Omegle <laughs> was prior to that and I got really curious, okay? I never really liked meeting new people, but I was super bored and I had nothing else to do, so I tried it. I used the no cam pure text version and I met Mark, we're gonna call him Mark. After all the creepy dudes, I met Mark, a funny guy that only got on the site to literally just send jokes. I started tearing up from laughing just by talking to him. Our sense of humor really matched perfectly and we talked for almost two hours before I got disconnected. I was so sad when that happened. For the first time ever, I wanted to talk to somebody. When I reloaded the site, I got matched with a bunch of different creeps, some friendly ones, but they weren't Mark until nighttime came around. I was still thinking of him, so I started using Omegle again, and to my surprise, the first one I matched with sent me a simple message, and he said, Amber? Question mark. So I don't know if this is her real name or fake name. And, oh, okay, they, wow, it's like she reads my mind. No, my name is not Amber. <laughs> but I gave Mark a fake name, and that was Amber. <laughs> When I told him that it was me, he starts begging me to give him my social media account or something. <laughs> social security. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Turns out when I got disconnected around 4 p.m., he stayed on the site trying to match with me again. It was around 9 p.m. when we matched again. Wow. He was thinking the same thing. Our personalities matched really well with each other, and there was just so much to talk about. The games he liked and I liked, mm. the drama and anime that I love, he loves too. And he's also very smart. I just know that I'll learn a lot from talking to him. But there is the one thing that I fear. Uh, the tags we put on Omega were the exact same, like province name and um, Philippines. And I was thinking that he might be someone from my neighborhood, and I didn't like the idea of that. I was so worried that we might even know each other. What if he's a family member? I don't know, that's weird. I told him that I really don't like sharing my personal information with people online, and he respected it. So the two of us agreed to use dummy Snapchat accounts, and we did not ask each other for photos or names. We just talked like friends online, bro. Hey bro, what, what, what? this could be your cousin or something, you know what I mean? Bro. You gotta ask for them names. Yo! <laughs> Come on! Is that what you're doing? No, but I would know <laughs> if it was you. Because he'd be like, no cap, BFFR, <laughs> no legit, like, I don't even know what he says. Um, <laughs> bro. <laughs> uh, bro. <laughs> this lasted for months. Sometimes we would cook up the same meals, watch our favorite shows, and chat as if we were hanging out in real life. And I don't know if it was because of that or because we were so bored during the pandemic or what, but it was just something that we always love to do. It was super fun. I really enjoyed it. After more than six months, 
We both knew that we were developing feelings for each other. Our topics got deeper. It wasn't just about shows, jokes, or food. We would text all day, every day, every single day about our real life problems. When he needed to do something, he would ask me for advice. When I was breaking down, he was there to calm me down. When I had problems, I would run to him first and he would help me solve them. He was four years older than me, so I would always listen to his thoughts and hey, they were too mature for my 22 year old brain. He really taught me a lot. So they were <clears throat> texting for months? No mm -hmm. face, nothing? No. That's wild. <laughs> He's like, that's wild. I asked for tip pics this first day. No, bro. So, I, I mean, I'm not, you know, hating, yeah. but like... No. Hating? <laughs> hating? No, but so you were, te they were texting. Yeah. Just straight up texting? Mm -hmm. Yes, then, then. That's wild. <laughs> you need to go on that Netflix show, Love is Blind. <laughs> Love is Blind? Mm -hmm. Is that, what is that? It's a reality show where they date. But they can't see each other. They can only hear each other's voices. Nah, I can't do that. <laughs> and, then, and then they get married before they even see each other. Nah, I can't do that. Why, Why would they do that? There must be an incentive. Can you find your true love without looking at their face? No. Like, can you connect so, with them spiritually, mentally? Okay. This is a bucket, 100%. Personality and looks, physical attraction. What percentage do you give each one to reach 100? <laughs> He's like stressing. He's like, okay, do I tell the truth? Or no, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, really. I'll be honest. 65% personality. I don't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I gotta see how they look. What if they look like... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Monster Inc. Sophie looks like Monster Inc. Yo, I can't... How do you love someone based off... Oh, their personality and their <laughs> no, no. I'm not saying that, but how, how do you base off like not seeing them visually too? Like, that's cr that's wild. He said, that's crazy. <laughs> like, would you have dated Stephanie without her, like, seeing her for yeah. months? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Absolutely. Nah. <laughs> Love is blind. I'm gonna check that out. <laughs> He's on the next season, guys. <laughs> He's like, nah, you guys, nah, nah. Can you just describe what you look like right now? Please. Oh, so you should go. Or I you should go on Singles Inferno. Or just apply. Yeah, uh, yeah. Why not? We'll see, we'll see. Why not? <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't. I gotta see. See what? Singles Inferno. You can, you can see. see. Oh, Singles, Singles Inferno? Inferno? Yeah. So how do you apply? How do you apply? I got you. Shall we get this started after the smoke bomb? <laughs> yes. Wait, really? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That'd be fun though. It'd be so much but I fun. I feel like there has so to cool. be pros and cons. You find true love. If not, you'll probably find an Instagram account with hundreds of thousands of people waiting for you. Oh, oh. Uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's make it happen. <laughs> you said interesting. And then the lucky ones, they get both. Oh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's see where this goes. He's four years older than me, right? And so what I'm was always the story I forgot? <laughs> <laughs> They're talking online from Omega. Oh, yes, Mark. Mark yes, Mark. he was four years older than me, so I would always listen to his thoughts. And hey, they were too mature for my 22-year-old brain. He really taught me a lot. For real, though, none of my past boyfriends made me feel this way. That's crazy. I love it. Like, that's the relationship I love, right? Mark was a thousand out of a hundred. He made my ex seem like a 0.5 out of 10. Wow. Yeah. I did not need to see his appearance, you know, to say that. I just knew that my heart was going crazy for this guy. Oh yeah, I forgot to add. Aside from our conversations, um, things started to turn spicy. Like, our conversations went from regular ramen to two times nuclear noodles. Dang, yes. that's pretty spicy. <laughs> yeah. We often sent each other, um, photos. Okay, so they're, they're going to the next level. They were like, one chip challenge hot, okay? <laughs> Is there a face? I don't, I, I guess not. And yeah, we were like nasty or whatever. So no face, just body? Yeah. Also, he's like hot, hot. Like, wow, give me a gallon of milk and a tub of ice cream hot. That's what I knew that we did not know each other. She's like, I don't know anyone hot. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone around her gets instantly offended. Okay, he has a cool tattoo on his neck pertinent to the story. Wow, he got neck tattoos? J yeah. Park? What? what? <laughs> I was thinking the Rio guy from Good Girls. <laughs> Elizabeth, Yo, get in the, the car, mama. <laughs> Stephanie, <laughs> get in the bed. <laughs> get in the bed. Get in the bed now. <laughs> now. No, but I have a question. Yeah. What if yeah. in the love blind thing, <laughs> he's still thinking about it. <laughs> no, let's, let's just say. Yeah, let's just say. You guys went well, and then you finally see. Yeah. Yeah. But she is... Or he is not what you want. It's like what you like. Yes. Okay. One she, feet tall. One feet tall. What's wrong with one feet tall people? <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh -huh. he. Okay. So his question is like, mm -hmm. 
You wanted a 10, but he's a three. Yeah, so what we've seen, we, we're not suggesting this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, we would never do this. What we've seen that they do is that they come up with some bizarre ass reasons. They're like, you don't like fish tacos? I don't know if we can be together. <laughs> yeah. They'll ask you some crazy questions. Yeah. They'll be like, hey, how do you feel about this random big concept? How do you feel about science? Uh -huh. You're like, science is good. I don't know. My parents, we grew up, we don't like science. I just feel like yeah. there's too many There are some dudes who will be pretty mean about it. Yeah. yeah. And then like, you can actually date a bunch of them in the beginning. So they'll all meet at the end. And then some of these dudes will be like, hey, remember that other girl I was talking to, but I didn't propose to because I loved you more? Well, she's so much hotter than you. Yeah. Like they say it in front of them? Pretty yeah. much, yeah. Damn. I gotta watch this. Yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. All of them, yeah. All the guys need therapy. Anyway, neck tattoo. After nearly a year of us chatting, he started to tell me how much he wanted to know me in real life. That scared me. I started overthinking because I lied to him about my whole life. Yeah, okay. I told him that my parents were teachers, but my dad is a high-ranking government official in our province. Like, he's on the local news Whoa. all the time. Mark and I had even talked about one of his interviews. Oh, God. And I don't even know, my mom is, I don't even know what to call it, but like a known Christian, lol. Everyone who knows me in real life will honestly think that I'm a good girl, an angel, and I'm not. But that's who I had to be. My siblings and I were taught to be this way for our parents' image. My mom is super strict, super conservative. Just know that my mother would literally kill me if she knew that I had a nasty, if I was a nasty girl online. I don't even know how to explain to her that I met Mark on Omegle. She would end me. She does not know that I had boyfriends before because if she knew this, I wouldn't be breathing right now. My mom thinks that a guy should literally go outside our house and ask for her blessing just for that guy to be able to take me on a date, to be able to court me. I wanted to tell him who I was, but I was too scared. I told him I wasn't ready and I know Mark was sad about my choice, but he respected it anyway. After that, Mark got a new online job and I started focusing on my classes since online classes for a pre-med student suck. Okay, wow, that's a lot. A pre-med student? That's insane. This, I struggled with, I'm gonna struggle with this word, bacteriology. I had to know all the kinds of bacteria and I was dying. I had to put in triple the effort in order to understand the lessons. Also, because I had to protect my father's name, so yeah, I cannot fail. During that time, Mark and I talked a lot less. We did not have enough time for each other and months passed and we would just only say like, hi. I know that he was hoping to have a serious relationship with me in real life, but I was just too scared. So I understand when he started distancing himself. I did not push for us to have more conversations. I wouldn't text him if he didn't text me first. I was afraid of being a bother to him and his work. I tried not to think about him, but and my brain just started pulsating with so much knowledge because I was studying so much, you know? And then 2022 came. My cousin May is getting married. They wanted a little ceremony and she asked me to be her maid of honor. I'd have walked down the aisle together with the best man, who is also her groom's brother. This. The groom is him. The best man. Has a familiar, familiar tattoo on his neck. At first, I thought I was thinking too much, but after the ceremony, we started to eat and party. I guess he got sweaty and decided to remove his coat, then open a few buttons and oh my god. It's the same tattoo that Mark had. We did not know what the, each other's voices sounded like, so I tried to remember his photos where I saw his body, and it matched with his. Then Mark told me that he, was a, he had a younger brother who was an architect. The groom is an architect. Mark is six feet tall, and I'm 5'7", wearing heels, and that guy was really tall. I brought up a series that I watched with Mark, and boom, he said the same comments that Mark had said. I even tried joking using Mark's joke, and he knew that joke. Dang. I had drinks with him, took a bunch of pictures, and oh yeah, I'm sure we even danced a lot. Everyone thinks that we match perfectly, and what the heck we actually do. He's super handsome, okay? I kind of felt shy being paired with such a beautiful gentleman, but <laughs> like, oh my. At the end of the night, me and my cousins became really good friends with the groom and with in real life Mark. Okay, can you just think about this? Imagine she starts dating Mark without telling her that she's also Amber, mm -hmm. but then they get married and Mark is laying in bed always thinking about Amber, the one that got away, but she's Amber! 
That would that be would a be. crazy love story, you know? <laughs> and then he's like, babe, we got to break up because I got to go find the one that I let get away. Her name is and she, Amber. And she's I'm like, I'm Amber. I am Amber. And then he's look like, at my body. Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Someone put us in charge of making K-dramas right now. Someone call Netflix. Thank you. You think she'll tell him? I hope so. I hate those movies where they don't tell them. I can't do that. Like those movies where they go to the old high school hometown and they see the love of their life after they get a divorce from the big city. They go to the hometown and then he's a bartender and shit. And they just act like they don't know each other and she's all like, I'll get a whiskey on the rocks. And he's like, oh, I knew you. I used to know a girl who liked a whiskey on the rocks. This is really elaborate. <laughs> this is really elaborate. Uh, you know what I mean? And then she just never tells him that, hey, I was the love of your life. That bothers me. If you got into a car accident and you had amnesia, I would be playing a nonstop audio recording of me going, I'm your wife, okay? You better remember and get your together and you love me. You love me. You love me. You love me. I'm your queen. I'm your queen. I'm your queen. Stephanie Sue for the win. Stephanie Sue is your wife. Yeah, like, I don't know why people don't tell people that. I'm, I would just sit there and be like, did you know? Hello? So after a week, uh, May invited me to a pool party. I thought it was just for us cousins, but <sighs> Mark was there too. I was so scared to change into my swimsuit because I had a birthmark that he would definitely see. And remember those nuclear noodle photos? Yeah, Mark would know that birthmark. Bis, I wore leggings into the pool. I looked down, but I was so scared. In person, talking to him was wonderful. He was so educated and I didn't know how to swim. So I was just doing laps in the pool and he noticed. He tried to teach me how to swim. I was overheating at this point. I saw his abs in photos, but the 3D version. <laughs> well, okay. I was losing it. My cousins were kind of teasing us about each other and I just nervously laughed through it all. I thought hey, that- Hey, quick question though. So basically, Mark had had a thing with Amber online, yeah. right? Now Mark is <laughs> hitting on this new girl. That's but they weren't know. official. What yeah, do you mean? Not, they've been I'm talking for months. It's though. not though. But do you think that's sus? That's no. Sus. You don't think that's sus because it's no. the same person. No. Stop trying to ruin the that's fantasy. That's sus Mark. though. That's okay. us. <laughs> That's us. So you think that you would be so hung up on me if we had never even met? Yeah. Hell yeah. He's a liar. I thought this would be the last interaction for us too. But then a few days later, he added me on Facebook. He sent me the photos that we all took using his camera. On Messenger, I started trying to type in a different manner and sh Ha, I was so scared. And he would remember Amber, that he would remember Amber. I thought that was it. But the very next day, I shared a Jollibee ad saying that I was craving it. And he immediately messaged me to ask if I wanted to go with him. Ah, I lied and said that I would be going with my younger sister. What's going on? Why are you doing this? He then insisted on picking us up and treating us. Oh my goodness. Wow. Now, we're still talking as friends, and I'm 100% sure that it was him, and I don't know what to do. I really like him, but I don't know if I should tell him about Amber. I'm also afraid that he might figure it out somehow. I blame you and Dan Dan for this. Just kidding, but please <laughs> tell me what to do. Wait, did I tell you that Mark was once a professor? I'm kind of sad that I missed an opportunity to be a part of the teacher Bisses. I'll try harder next time. <laughs> Just kidding. Unless. Yo, what? I love you so much, Bis. Thank you very much for being who you are. You have no idea how much your videos saved my day. I've been a loyal fan since the metal looking rectangular tray set up. What is it? <laughs> Do you remember my metal trays that I would set up oh, like yes. next to each other? Yes, yes, yes. Huh? yes. Dang, well, that was like a, a long time ago. Loyal fan. And because of you, I started doing so many productive things. I started taking my mental health seriously. And I also started having this boy problem. LOL. <laughs> Season Thank <two. laughs> you. I love you all so much. Hello, Mr. Mingo Butt, and barks to Dan Dan. Hey. He said, hey. Can you bark for her? I'll my, bark that love is My dogginess blind. isn't coming out today. Yeah, wow. <laughs> dogginess. Okay, guys, what do you think she should... You gotta tell him that you're Amber. I mean, he's gonna find out anyways. Ah! I no. think it needs to be like a... Romantic moment. Or should it be like a test? What? It's like she should, she should, she should like go on there as Amber and try to talk to him again, and then wanna go, Bro, on, a no, wanna go on a date. You yeah. are so toxic. <laughs> this is such no, toxic no. behavior. Don't this. listen no, to this No, do this, guy. do this. Like no. you should pretend to be an Amber, and then <laughs> yes. message him. You wanna go on a date, and if he says yes, he's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, got him. <laughs> He's like, you want to go to Jollibee? And oh. then suddenly he cancels on you, goes with Amber. Oh, this is so toxic. This is so toxic. Here's Tell him to advice. pick one, either me or Amber. <laughs> <laughs> 
Here is my advice. It's a win-win. Okay, you start dating him as you because remember, Amber, you know, isn't. You had lied about your background with Amber. Or is it is it better to tell him ahead of time so he doesn't feel like he's been lied to? Oh, that's true. Oh, I was thinking sure. of like it's a drama moment, and then like after he's already fallen in love, she's like, by the way. Puts on a wig. <laughs> I'm Amber. <laughs> Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. Song. Okay, next confession. Should I stay or should I go? It's a lot of relationship advice I'm about to be dishing out. <laughs> Hello, Stephanie. I have a con it's a very formal introduction. Thank you. I have a conflicting problem. Hopefully, you can help. I have this boyfriend I've dated for six years now. We met in high school during our junior year and we've been together since. I should be happy, right? Wrong, we're 24 now and he still refuses to grow up. He spends hundreds of dollars on his card game hobby. It's gotten to the point where he started taking money from my bank account for cards, saying it's an investment and it'll pay off. Cards? <laughs> Yeah, it's done anything but that. It's gotten to the point where he clearly has a problem, and I've confronted him about it before, and the arguments always lead to him complaining about me spending money on useless things, like a new couch, an AC, that we can live without. He seems to <laughs> he have- He calls AC useless things? <laughs> he no, seems to have AC. forgotten. The house we rent from his parents doesn't come with an AC system, and we have no furniture since it's our first time moving out together. It wasn't, okay my, it wasn't my idea to move uh, in, and I was perfectly uh, content with staying with my dad until I finished school. Now, whenever I bring up his spending habits as putting us in the red and causing problems, he just tells me to grow up. Um, sir, I'm not spending hundreds of dollars that aren't mine on cards. Having a hobby is great, but if you are having to take money from people without telling them, then clearly it's a problem. It's gotten to the point where I'm no longer even attracted to him. Lately, his friends have started noticing, especially his best friend, let's call him Daniel. Sorry, Dan Dan. It's the only name I can think of that's subtle enough. Daniel has been coaching me through this whole fixing my relationship problem thing. It's to the point where there's not much we can do if he doesn't want to grow up. So what do we do instead? Go to a kickback. Let's drink and vent out our anger. Me and Daniel have some shared trauma where we've lost our mothers because of sickness and we talk about how proud they would have been seeing us on our way to graduating on time. Of course, in a really drunk and emotional fashion, we end up kissing. This man made my confusing, distraught, drunk self finally feel safe and loved for the first time in a long time. And stupidly, we ended up going to his house, but we didn't sleep with each other. He was perfectly respectful and offered to let me sleep in his bed while he slept in the living room. While drunk me wasn't having it. I told him I'll only go to bed if he sleeps next to me. No funny business. Just stay nearby in case one of us feels sick and needs help, you know what I mean? He agreed, and that's exactly what we did. Just kidding, we kissed more. <laughs> but we agreed not to go further no. until we could figure out what to do with my boyfriend slash his best friend from work. We stayed up all night trying to figure out how to break it to him gently. Funnily enough, we ran into your video and told each other if you responded to our story, we'd follow whatever advice you give us. Hey, that's on you. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and relax. <laughs> We're longtime subscribers. Truthfully, this is what we bonded over when we met for the first time at a Korean barbecue place. So we're hoping you'll help us. Love Hannah, my fake name, and Daniel, his fake name. Okay. Go ahead. See, this is the problem. People don't like when I say this. I had friends where they really didn't like when I said this. But like we both agree on this concept, okay? Which is the idea that we think that there are a few, like maybe a handful of decisions that you make in life that impact Everything. The, your future, your goals, everything gets impacted by these handful of decisions. And we don't put enough importance on our partner. Like, people just like fall in love and they're like, oh man, we have problems, but we're in love. You know, it's fine. Like, I'm sure we'll work it through. But that's like a crazy decision. And if you guys are already having financial problems and he, like, his values are not the same as yours in terms of finances, I just don't think it's gonna work. So, I mean... Um, like, fundamentally, like, how people yeah. think about, like, spendings or things like that. It just needs to align. Because mm -hmm. that's the number one reason couples fight and divorce and all Usually that. Usually because of money. Yeah. And a lot of the not money, yes, and also, like, values. Like, how do you see money? How do you Not just money, money, but, like, everything, right? Like, how you view things. Yeah. How to raise children, like... Yeah, and even the fact that he was, like, pointing out that you bought a couch. 
an AC. I would, I would be very stressed to have a partner like that, let's say if I decided to have children. Because can you imagine, you're like, hey, can you help me with the kids? And they're like, I already helped you with the kids. You already had time to yourself, like when you were cooking dinner. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? I was cooking dinner for the kids. You know, so, uh, that's a lot of accountability. But like, I don't know. My heart wants this romance for you. My heart really does. I say you gotta go. So, wow, he's very like putting his foot down Wait, today. So he already kissed, she already kissed someone. Yeah. Just go with that guy. <laughs> go with the one that you made out with. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, he treats you good, right? I mean, he must. He watches us. I I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is like a crazy love story that I'm rooting for. Let me know what happens. Yeah, I hope you and Daniel get to have a cute little love story. Oh, why do you feel like... Do you feel like you're in this relationship? Yes. <laughs> it's like, that's my name. Yeah, that's my name. And now you're my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, right. you better watch out. You got two Daniels fighting for you now. <laughs> that's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Because these were some wild confessions. Honestly, a lot of relationship confessions. Make sure you check out ExpressVPN linked in the description. Keep your internet safe. Thank you. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.